Welcome to DIY Drone Part 3. Uh, good to see you again. So this is the video series where I'm teaching you guys how to design and build your own 3D printed drone. Uh, we'll just do a brief recap for those of you who might be new to the series. So in part one I talk about the motivation for this whole project and I showed you the Holmes Flight version 1 prototype. And then in part two I touched on the components that you need, uh, the fundamentals of drone design, and then we worked on that uh, blueprint for the 3D model. Now today in part 3 uh, we're going to be doing the CAD modeling itself. I'm really excited to show you guys what the, the drone looks like and my process to get there. It took a lot of trial and error and in the model that I'm actually going to be working with is probably about the fifth iteration already of the, the, the 3D model. So I did have uh, several runs at the design and I was trying to figure out things like the proportions, the angles of the arms, and also just the best way to make a split body design, uh, which I'll show you how. So in the end I decided on 45 degree arms, so a true X frame, and I went with this kind of, I'm calling it like a low poly uh, style of this motor guard, and I'll be mimicking that style throughout the rest of the frame so that I have a coherent kind of look, and I'm really liking that aesthetic at the moment. So right at the start I mocked up the motors and the flight controller stack in the 3D model so that I could get a better visualization of the kind of dimensions I'm working with and build the frame around that. Uh, although I did neglect to model the XT60 connector and the camera and the LiPo battery uh, components which are quite essential to the actual size and form of the frame. So uh, but having not having not modeled those in there I was making it a lot harder for myself than I needed to and that's why I went back and measured those up and put those into the design before going any further okay so it's about 8 30 on a Monday night and I'm about halfway through the 3d modeling process now I've realized that I made a little bit of a mistake at the start by not measuring my electronic components beforehand it's making designing the body itself quite difficult so what I'm going to do now is go back a few steps, measure my components and make some physical models of them within the design and I'll build the frame around that to get a nice tight fit and to avoid any wasted space. Uh, luckily for me, my, luckily my new digital calipers just arrived today and I'm going to open those now and take some measurements. Okay, so I bought these calipers from the, the good guys at AliExpress and they came to New Zealand within a couple of weeks. I'm just going to get stuck straight into it. Okay, there's a lot of uh, foam protection there. Cause it's foam. So now that I've got those components mocked up in their rough positions, I can focus on building the form of the frame around these components and I can get a really close tolerance, uh, a nice tight fit for everything. And then I can make some further refinements to the form of the frame, refinements to the form of the frame. And I added in a couple of little bracing elements, a couple of webs uh, to brace behind the camera and a couple at the back of the frame too with XT60 connector will sit. Okay, so to make the split body part, I did I did have a few different uh, attempts at it, and the the way that I found worked best for me was I basically I, I extruded the second body using the same profile as the lower frame, and from there I actually used the same cut across that profile uh, across that body, and with a 0.2 millimeter tolerance, so that when I print and fit that, it'll be a perfect fit. Uh, so once again, just to reiterate, I went through several versions of this design. Here's a few of the failed attempts. Uh, I'm up to version 4 or 5 now. The upper cover does have a few overhangs, which will make it a lot harder to print, and it'll make it a lot uh, slower to print. So I'll be refining that further uh, after my test print, and if I can, I'll be getting rid of every overhang. Um, I hate overhangs, I hate using support material, but... Just for this prototype, I want to get a physical uh, model of this out so that I can start mocking up the components and I can visualize better where I need to make more adjustments. 
And so keeping the electronics cool in a sealed frame like this is going to be quite a challenge. Uh, things like the ESCs and the battery of course, just about everything gets quite warm. And so I've put a few airflow channels throughout the top cover uh, to help hopefully uh, keep everything cool enough so that it doesn't overheat. And because I'm initially printing it out of PLA, uh, we don't want those components to get too hot because it will actually deform the plastic of the frame too. So I've got a couple of airflow channels on the sides there. There's one right at the top in the front and that one actually goes through and it, there's a vent above and below the battery. So with any luck, it'll keep everything nice and cool. But again, we'll see how that goes and I can refine that further if needed. I'm actually not 100% happy with the look of the side vents or any of the vents. So figuring out how to make them a little more subtle will be my next challenge. So I've, I've actually spent a whole week on this 3D model and I've got to be careful not to get too tied down with the uh, digital version because uh, I can get stuck on that for a long time. Once I print it, there's going to be a million things I want to change anyway. It's much better to get a rough uh, prototype out and, and make adjustments in the software afterwards. So I'm also keeping in mind the limitations of 3D printing throughout this whole design process. Uh, obviously you want to have minimal overhangs. My upper cover is a terrible example of this because that's going to be needed. That's going to need to be printed with support. I'm intending to print the top cover upside down. The lower plate will be right way up. I do need to still add some holes in the top cover for fitting the aerials of the video transmitter and the receiver. I haven't 100% decided on the placement of those components yet, which is why I've left that as a blank. So I'm intending for the VTX and the RX to fit somewhere inside the top cover. Uh, just I'll probably attach them with uh, the 3M VHB double-sided tape, and then I can run out the aerials and figure out where the best place for them to come out, put some holes in the design, and do another print. Okay, so to attach the top cover to the lower frame, I had a few troubles with uh, figuring this out, but I ended up seeing an example on another drone actually, uh, where they secured a kind of like an encasing cover to the frame with rubber bands. And I thought that's a really clever and effective method of attaching it. So I've put these two little hooks, one on either side. The idea is that a rubber band will attach to those and go underneath the frame, holding the whole cover in place. Because of the form of the frame, uh, it should sit there quite nicely and as long as the rubber band stays intact, the cover will stay on. It'll mean it's easy to take it off and release the cover. The alternative to a rubber band would be to 3D print a clip system. Uh, so that's incorporated into the frame, although I do want to try and avoid doing that just to keep the whole thing a little more minimal. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the CAD design. So from here I need to do a test print of both pieces. Uh, see how they fit together. I want to check the size and proportions of everything and do a dry fit of the components and I'll do all of that before I go any further with a 3D modeling. So my test print will be done on the OB1 Prism uh, designed by my dad, Mr. Wired One on YouTube. If you want to check him out I'll put his channel in the description box. I don't have any 3mm ABS at the moment so I will be printing it in the black PLA you see here. So here's what we're going to cover in part 4. I'll be showing you the result of the 3D printed prototype. Uh, I'll be I'll tell you about the components that I'm going to be using. I've actually ordered these already, and they're coming from China, so so I should have those by the time the next video comes out. And I can tell you guys a little bit about why I chose these components and the way that they're going to fit in the frame. Uh, we will do a, I'll do a full test assembly, check all the tolerances, and I'll be making countless adjustments. I already know this before printing the final frame for assembly. So as always, thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you thought. Constructive feedback is always greatly appreciated. I know that the sound was a little bit loud in the last video, so I've fixed that for this one. Let me know if there's anything you guys want me to change or do differently, and that's what's going to help me make these videos bigger and better each week. And one more side note, I shot this episode using my new Rode on-camera microphone and a Samyang 14mm wide-angle lens. So what did you guys think? Uh, does it sound any better? Does it look any better? How's the lighting? It's a little bit overcast today. Let me know what you think, anyway. Look forward to it. Uh, thanks everybody for watching and I will see you next time.